Lesson one is on error management generations. In this lesson, we're going to talk about the different types of errors that can occur in quantum networks and the different ways of managing these errors. Uh, so let's begin with the next step called Introduction to QUISP. QUISP stands for Quantum Internet Simulation Package. And we're going to uh, make it clear why we begin with um, QUISP. So quantum networks are very complex hybrid network systems. They contain large number of subsystems consisting of nodes of different types and of different functionality. Some nodes can only measure incoming qubits. Some nodes can store them in quantum memories. Some nodes can even operate on them and do other um, uh, useful operations. Some nodes are designed to uh, route the quantum information in the quantum network, or just uh, they're in the form of repeaters. Uh, they're designed to um, implement entanglement swapping. So all of these um, operations, or most of them, are conditional. That adds to the layer of complexity. The uh, operations of networks don't just depend on some pre-programmed routine, but actually depends on the outcomes of um, measurements or other operations, uh, either at the node itself or at some other nodes in the network. Also, these um, operations often have to be synchronized. We have to think about how to deal with desynchronization. And we have to think, are we going to uh, distribute bipartite quantum systems or more complex multipartite systems? Now, networks, quantum networks are hybrid because uh, quantum networks don't exist in a bubble. We are actually relying on classical components as well and the classical infrastructure. We're not only sending single uh, uh, qubits representing our quantum information. We have to also communicate cl classically between the networks using classical uh, bits of information. So how do we analyze the performance of such a complex hybrid system? Well, one way is to simulate it. And this is where QUISP comes in. The Quantum Internet Simulation Package, or QUISP, is designed to do just that. And we give you an introduction um, before we begin talking about quantum errors in quantum networks, because throughout this module, there will be interspersed demonstrations of the various protocols and uh, communication routines that we will introduce theoretically. We will also show you how they perform in a real um, world scenario with actual errors included. So what is QUISP? It is an event-driven simulation package of quantum repeater networks. It is built on the Omnet++ discrete event simulator written in C++. And it is being developed by the Advancing Quantum Architecture Group at Keio University. And if you're interested in finding out more about QUISP or becoming a contributor, just go to this GitHub uh, webpage. And the goal of QUISP is to simulate large heterogeneous networks. Large, here we're talking about 100 networks, uh, where each network contains 100 nodes, where each node contains up to 100 qubits. And the important part is that the networks themselves are heterogeneous, meaning not everything is uniform, but uh, different technologies are, are used in different networks. So, some of the questions that QUISP is designed to help you with. First of all, uh, classical networks are also very complex uh, systems. And we observe some emergent behavior which was uh, before um, unpredicted. Do quantum networks have the same emergent behaviors? Or are they different? Uh, QUISP is designed to help you with protocol design, uh, with its testing, and with its validation. Also, QUISP is designed to um, um, help you with connection architecture. How do you evaluate the performance of a given type of connection architecture? Uh, quantum uh, nodes are, can be linked in very different ways. And depending on which way you choose, which architecture you use, the performance can vary quite uh, substantially. And we are also interested in dynamical behavior. Quantum networks are not static objects. Things can change. Nodes can go offline, uh, links can get broken. How does the network deal with such dynamical behavior? That can really be answered fully only with CRISP or uh, simulation of quantum networks. So what are the different configurable parameters in CRISP? Well, we can configure the network itself, what uh, types of nodes, what number of nodes we want to use, how are they connected, what is the topology of the network. 
We can also uh, include errors, namely the channel, the memory, the gate, the measurement, the BSA errors, and all, crucially the photon loss. We are also um, able to uh, configure the traffic. Normally in a quantum network, you just don't have two uh, uh, nodes talking to each other, trying to uh, obtain qubits so that they can perform teleportation. You have large number of nodes sending messages, um, sending requests. So uh, um, it's important to generate this type of traffic. Some nodes will be more busy, some nodes will be less busy. Photon emission. What is the probability that the memory emits a photon and this photon is uh, successfully captured uh, into the fiber? And also, what is the measurement count for our state tomography process? Uh, an important way of configuring all of these things is using the network definition file or the net file. Here you specify the number and type of nodes the classical and quantum connections, as well as all the previously mentioned configurable parameters. This is an example of a net file. This is how you define a small network. Here you have a, a few sub-modules in the language of Net++. Really what they mean is uh, what are the nodes of my network. You specify uh, the type uh, of each node in this way. Similarly, you have to connect these nodes together, and that's done by the connections over here and then you can run your simulation. This is a sample simulation of a fairly complex uh, network, including many different end types of end nodes, as well as routers and repeaters. Now, what is the output of the simulation? Often we are interested in the fidelity of the end-to-end -end bell pair. How do all these uh, errors affect the quality of such a state? and that's calculated through the tomography process. How often can we distribute bell pairs per second? This is crucially important to applications. The more high quality bell pairs we can distribute per second, the better. What is the tomography time? We will see in this uh, lesson indeed that tomography is a very resource heavy process. So how much time does it actually consume to find out what the actual state uh, at, the, at the end um, that's distributed between two end nodes uh, is. And also how many measurements do we need to dedicate to find out what the state of the distributed um, pair is. And this is an example output file. Here we've got the distance between the nodes set to 28 kilometers and the respective fidelities and the tomography uh, time and how many measurements were dedicated to the tomography process. This concludes our introduction to QISP. Let's jump into the types of errors that can occur in quantum networks.